So at this time, I will call the order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. The time is 6.30 p.m. Our first order of business tonight will be to approve our minutes of the last meeting, which was September 9th, 2024. I'm also we approve the minutes of September 9th. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes of September 9th. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, three nothing. All righty, our first new business today is going to be to discuss our select board meeting schedule for the next couple of months. So uh, I think at your last meeting, uh, or maybe not, I, um, I've been, I, I've thought about making a recommendation to the select board that you consider moving to a bi-weekly schedule for at least part of the year, um, outside of the budget process, of course. Um, my suggestion would be to move to a bi-weekly schedule until or through the month of November. Um, in December, the budget is going. The budget season is going to be really kicking in. You're going to start with budget meetings, um, but until then, unless there is a dire need for a special meeting, I think that given the length of your meetings, you might be able to manage uh, bi-weekly meetings. Uh, pretty well. Um, this would not only um, uh, relieve the board of having to meet every single week, it will also be, I think it will also help the Newtown administrator transition um, in not having to prepare for a weekly meeting right at the get-go. Right get so my suggestion um, or my recommendation would be um, to, after tonight's meeting, schedule a meeting for September 30th. Then October 15th, because October 14th is a holiday, and so the 15th would be a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, October 28th, November 12th, which would also be a Tuesday because the 11th is a holiday, and then November 25th. Okay. That sounds great to me. Um, and I think in general, this is a good conversation to have, not just about this specific year, but in general, we do already do a biweekly schedule in the summer. Um, but extending that from the end of budget season to the beginning of the next budget season makes sense to me. Uh, we've definitely seen, you know, in the last two years, the majority of our meetings outside of budget season are half hour, 45 minutes. We could easily have that be an hour and 15, an hour and a half every other week and save a bunch of people driving and, and, um, and obviously, you know, your time and the new, the new town administrator's time and whatnot. Um, so I'm all for it, I, I think. Right, and we don't... It doesn't have to be set in stone. We can do it, and if it's not working out, yep, we go back to every other week or back to every week. Or, or if a special need, meeting needs to be called in right. between time, that can always be done. Yep. Sure. Yep. No, I, I like getting that out in front, and then again, if we need to decide that we really need to meet on the what would be the the fourth of November or something like that, great. We'll we'll talk about that, and we'll you know make that happen. Um, but yeah, let's let's. Um, Let's vote on that if yeah. that works for you. Yeah. So uh, I would entertain a motion to move to bi-weekly the dates listed uh, until the end of November. Make a motion we move to bi-weekly through November. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank nothing. you. And do us a favor um, and just shoot an email out with those dates so that I can get those <laughs> in my calendar. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Wonderful. That's what I like to hear. All right, so that's an easy one. Um, next up is, um, well, actually, I'm going to switch the other two because we have David on the line here. Um, next, we're going to talk about approving one-day liquor licenses for Mike's Maze. So okay. thank you for being here, David. Um, Not a problem. So just for everyone who's watching this knowledge, uh, Mike Mays does a uh, beer maze every year, which is very, uh, very fun and has been very successful for the last bunch of years. Um, and is here today to ask for one day liquor licenses for I think it's seven something, seven, eight, something like that. Uh, it's uh, it's actually I, I think it's actually five, wow. and it's uh, they're all uh, they're all for Fridays beginning September twenty seventh through October twenty fifth. Great. Yeah. Right. Any questions from the board on that? Wonderful. <laughs> David, anything you want to add or? No, it's been a great event um, and people seem to still have a very fun time when they come out. So we're excited to do it every year. Um, yeah, so I'm excited that people come back out and enjoy it again. Wonderful. Uh, I've heard nothing but wonderful things about it. I have many people who've gone uh, and reported back that it is just an absolute blast. So, hey, if you're listening and you want something fun to do on a Friday, there you go. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion to approve the five one-day liquor licenses as requested. Contingent, it, we, just, we just have two things we're waiting for. So contingent okay. on receipt of the public safety feedback and a liquor liability certificate. Great. So okay. five liquor licenses contingent on those 
items. All right, I motion we approve the one day liquor license contingent upon the safety, public safety and liquor, the liability. liquor liability certificate. Liquor liability certificate. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank have you, David. Blast. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming in. All right. Last on our new business is to authorize the chair to sign the Mass Trails Grant Feasibility Study Contract upon receipt of DCR notice to proceed. Finally, this is moving along. Um, Dan and I are going to be attending a grant initiation meeting tomorrow morning with DCR. Uh, following that, I need to submit a grant initiation form. Once we submit that grant initiation form, which I plan to do tomorrow, uh, we, will, we will have completed the grant initiation process. Um, we have received the notice to proceed from the state along with the fully endorsed state contract. And so um, the VHB, um, uh, VHB Engineering Services is going to be charged with doing the feasibility and de feasibility and design of the, or yeah, feasibility study of the um, shared use pathway. Um, the contract value is $195,090 and um, the contract is ready to be signed by the select board and you are authorized you're authorized by the state now to do it because the contract's been executed wonderful so at this time i would entertain a motion to uh, authorize myself the chair to sign the mass trails grant feasibility study contract now that we have our receipt from dcr motion to have nathaniel sign the contract with bhp to get the project moving second all right we have a motion made and seconded all those in favor aye aye all right, three nothing. That is great news. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Margaret. Um, this is really wonderful to get that moving. All right, so that is the end of our new business today. Uh, for old business, we have select board updates. I don't have anything this week. Crystal? I do mm -hmm. not. Dan? I do not either, actually. That's <laughs> three for three. Wonderful. Did the Village Center Committee have a oh, meeting? Oh, yeah, we did have a meeting. Okay. Actually, I, I'll, I'll tell you about that. So we did have a a meeting on Thursday and MassDOT came. Uh, we had uh, two by in person and one on the Zoom. And we just went through, that's yeah, actually a good discussion. We talked about uh, how we would, because I think there's a lot of agreement that we want calming through the corridor. The center itself is pretty much a split. So we we're talking, so we had uh, MassDOT in to talk about that, to talk about uh, we have a, an old project that's sitting on there kind of in the, that they have active, not active, but it's, it's, it's a project that was defined some years ago to look at the roundabout, uh, do the roundabout in the center uh, that's st stagnant. So we talked about whether it makes sense to open up a new one one day once we get through the feasibility study. We talked about the things we agreed on. Uh, they talked about some of the uh, programs that are available. And we try to, we kind of fleshed out a little bit some of the piecemeal stuff mm -hmm. and then higher level stuff. Um, the one thing that is, is sticking with me still is um, parallel parking. And uh, state law pretty much says you can't have parallel parking on the state road. They don't like any parking on the roads. But it happens, and it's Conway's got some of those places that have it. And I think there's initial uh, indication from MassDOT that they would talk about it if it's something we wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know what that means, and I'm trying to learn more. And the feasibility study will help flush it out. But the thing I'll tell you is that I've heard sometimes they'll do it if you want to take over the road, or it would be some kind of maintenance agreement where maybe we had to deal with the, the snow clearing or the parking related stuff. So anyway, to be to be found out later, or to just to be thought of, we're a long way off from any of that. And the alternative stuff would to think be about. nose in parking, like the. Oh, you can do. Well, you do the one thing about parallel. I like about parallel parking is that it's really good to slow people down. I mean, yeah, if you have it tight and you have, I mean, the state highway is a little tougher. And, and I always use this example in East Hampton, you ever go on Cottage Street, you mm -hmm. realize that when you go through there, there's only 20 feet between parked cars. Yep. And that is the best calming thing in a vertical, you know, unless you're doing bumps, that I've ever seen. I mean, everybody goes 20 miles an hour through there. But where would you put the parallel parking? You could put it in front of the bridge side, you could put it along in front of, you could put it in plenty of places. But it depends if you have, it depends, it kind of depends. You could put more in. Um, I guess with, you can probably put more in with the roundabout because you only need a single lane in each direction. Single lanes going in both directions. With, you don't have the slip lanes, or the, I'm sorry, the turning lanes. So right. there's more room to do stuff. That's all. I'm not saying we want it or we haven't. We haven't yeah, no, it. I'm just trying to think, you know, in my we head, I'm just trying to yeah. picture 
where would we put yeah, parallel and, parking yeah. and who yeah, would yeah, actually yeah. use that's it? That's true. Deerfield around their little center triangle thingy, they've got parking like on the fountain yeah. side of things. Right. I think that works pretty well. You some, know? People, some people need it's, it's attractive to this. It gives people, they can come park downtown, they can walk right to the, I mean, I know we've got private parking, but you know, not, uh, some, but we could, you know, this, there could be need for more. Mm -hmm. And um, again, I see it as a, it kind of helps define a village when you come in, you go, oh, this, it well, feels more like a, a, a village than a, you know, 40 foot of pavement kind of get through here. Well, in the stand tech or whoever it was, person who came in last time said that one of the things that we try to do is make it look like it's, like having cars on the side is going gonna, is gonna to make it feel like a, a village rather than just a highway that happens to have some buildings on the side of it, you know, and right. it's going to help the whole. So it's just it's just a thought, and uh, so we're going to look at that. We're going to look at all sorts, but uh, um, exciting that they came. Glad they came. They were supportive. You know, they they are showing here what the town wants, and uh, I guess the, the, I forget the date. What's the October meeting is coming up? I'm is sorry, it, I don't I have a date. I want to say the yeah, it's, it's a it's be a Thursday night in October. Coming up soon though. Okay. But I'm, yeah, I should I should have this out there. We'll we'll okay. get the word out on that. Okay. That, that meeting's coming. That's going to be a big presentation actually. Invite the whole town and. Uh, Oh, okay. I don't know the date, but uh, we'll we'll get that word out. Yeah, that's that's going to be important. Yeah, we can help do that. Okay. Yeah. That's that's pretty much it. Wonderful. Thank you, Dan. Uh, that should be it for select board updates. Uh, town administrator updates. Margaret. Okay. Uh, first of all, an update on the town administrator recruitment uh, process. Uh, Deb Radway, the HR consultant, and I started um, preliminary interviews, re remote uh, Zoom pr preliminary interviews today. They're going to continue through this week. Um, we have a number of them on Wednesday. And um, my hope, my firm hope, is to bring finalists for public interviews with the select board um, as soon as September 30th, hopefully on September 30th. Um, that would take a, a good chunk of your meeting. That's going to be a, a fairly fairly long meeting. Um, the uh, I think we have some good candidates. We now have 12 resumes that have been received or 12 application packets. So which is which is a good number for for this. Are all 12 being interviewed? No, okay. not all 12 are being interviewed. Um, not all 12 will be interviewed. But uh, let me think, I'd say I, I think we're at about seven at this point okay. being interviewed. So for preliminary interviews, um, the number of finalists, it will be either three or four. Okay. Three. All right, uh, the last meeting, the board locked in a heating oil price. My hope was that we'd get a $2.50 per gallon price. We got $2.57. So we're a little off, but it's still a good it's still a good price, better than last year's. And that's the nature of the fluctuations. You can't ever <laughs> that's, that's right, exactly. We have daily, future, daily futures fluctuations. Um, an update on uh, DEP's uh, notice to the town on the PFAS detection in... Um, in a residential well near the old landfill. Thank you, Crystal. Crystal was able to attend the meeting um, with me. We had a virtual meeting uh, with Stantec, our, our engineers. And um, we're, I'm very thankful that the town has um, Stantec doing the engineering because they will head up the um, um, meeting the requirements that DEP has, has imposed upon the town. At this point now, we are waiting uh, for Stantec's proposal for the work that's going to be required under DEP's notice of release. So we're waiting for that. Stantec has sent a notice um, uh, to the residents that's affected and is waiting for a response from that residence. If there is no response by this week, I will be sending a letter as a follow-up to Stantex on behalf of the town trying to get a response from the residents. So there are steps that we would follow should we not receive any acknowledgement um, from, from the residents. So we're just going to stay on it because the town has to do its due diligence here. Now, um, in terms of funding for that, mm -hmm. do we have money already available to be able to pay for the remediation? And also, my understanding is that we're additionally going to have to increase the frequency of our monitoring. It's possible. We don't know the details on that yet. We do think there is going to be a um, at least a short-term increase in the monitoring requirements, whether it's frequency or what chemicals are going to be or have to be uh, tested. Um, we don't quite know that information yet. That's going to be included in the proposal. Okay. However, there is going to be an additional cost. My expectation would be to come to the select board to use all of the remaining, uh, uh, well, probably all of the remaining ARPA funds, which is less than $5,000 at this point. 
Um, it's possible that we may have to ask the Finance Committee for a reserve fund transfer as well. Uh, because the well monitoring um, budget line is is not going to be able to fund the additional costs. Okay, All and right. we're going to obviously want to re readdress that <laughs> that uh, that budget uh, item this uh, year for yeah, the future. Yeah, yeah, uh, abs absolutely. Um, and there is going to be a long period of time that DEP is going to require s uh, have additional requirements. So we just don't know the costs or the scope of, okay. of that yet. But uh, I'll certainly share the proposal as soon as I receive it. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you for keeping us updated on that. Um, uh, my schedule, uh, this this particular uh, pay period, I I, I expect to exceed um, the 20 hours a week. Um, this week, I haven't had an issue um, to date, but but this week is going to be an issue because I'm going to be off next week, and I'm really trying to pack everything in uh, this week that needs to be done. Um, and so I um, I just ask for the board's um, approval to. To do what I need to do, I'll, I'll assure that it it's all balanced at 20 hours. You know, in the end, um, or if um, I do need to exceed 20 hours over the next few weeks, I'll, I'll uh, ask the board for approval on that. Great. And that is all I have right now. Wonderful. Thank you for those updates. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't see anyone on Zoom or in the audience, so. At this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay, motion we adjourn. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, and it is 647.